Hello guys, and thank you for listening and watching another episode of Live Free Podcast, where I talk about living a life of freedom, rest, and expansion, and rest in Christ Jesus. Listen, <clears throat> God has a word for us. He's wanting me to talk about generational wealth, generational wealth, not only <clears throat> as it pertains to money, but the responsibility that it carries. The Bible says, too much is given, much is required. So he wants us to know in this hour, as we go forth, as we walk into this generational wealth transfer, he wants us to know the weightiness of the responsibility that it carries. And also, some of the things he had me to hone in on was to list some actual things he wanted me to um talk about in terms of the different things that general generational wealth brings so in something in some cases with generational wealth you have to separate you have to know your position and you have to play it because wealth comes with a huge responsibility it's not enough to just get the money but you have to have the mental and the spiritual capacity to carry the vision God says he's going to give you visions, dreams. He's pouring out his spirit on all flesh. So in this hour, I just want to go over a few scriptures that he has given me to um, highlight and to talk about here. But first, before we get started, let's talk about generational wealth. What is the definition of generational wealth? So generational wealth refers to the assets passed on by one generation of a family to the next. And in some cases, assets are transferred after death in the form of an inheritance. In others, they are passed to the next generation while the giver is still alive. So there's different avenues and different streams of generational wealth. You have one that is passed on while someone is still living. You have the other after someone has passed away. And then you have assets passed on from one generation to the next. And we can probably relate to that better when we talk about the Hilton, like Paris Hilton, and how she was just inherently wealthy, right? The, the name, and she didn't have to do anything but be born to inherit what was rightfully hers. Okay, so that's the definition of generational wealth. So where in scripture do, do we see this generational wealth? Well, we all know about Abraham, right? We know about Abraham, but let's look at that a little bit closer. Let's look at Abraham um, and how God actually showed this to me. So Abraham, if you go to Genesis 13, okay, Genesis 13, uh, reading from the Amplified Bible of uh, verses, this is verses 1 through 10. And I'm going to read through this really quickly. And it says, and talks about Abraham and Lot. So Abraham went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and Lot, his nephew, with him, and to Negev, the south country of Judea, or Judah. Now Abraham was extremely rich in livestock and in silver and in gold. He journeyed on from the Negev as far as Bethel, to the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Ai, where he had first built an altar. And there Abraham called on the name of the Lord in prayer, but Lot who went with Abraham also had flocks and herds and tents. And his name was Abram. So God hadn't changed his name yet. Now the land was not able to support them, that is sustain all their gazing and water needs, while they lived near one another, for their possessions were too great for them to stay together. And there was strife and quarreling between the herdsmen and Abraham's cattle and the herdsmen of Lot's cattle. Now the Canaanite and the Perzicite were living in the land at the same time, making gazing of the livestock difficult. So Abraham said to Lot, Please let there be no strife and disagreement between you and me, nor between your herdsmen and my herdsmen, because we are relatives. Is not the entire land before you? Please separate yourself from me. If you take the left, then I will go right. And if you choose the right, then I will go to the left. So Lot looked and saw that the valley of the Jordan was well watered everywhere. This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. It was all like the garden of the Lord 
like the land of Egypt as you go to Zor at the south end of the Dead Sea. There's so much meat in that scripture because with generational wealth, it's going to come separation. Come a separation from family members, not because um, they're bad people, but sometimes people's part in the story are just up. And sometimes wealth and abundance brings strife and it brings division. It brings jealousy. It brings out all kinds of things uh, when you're not submitted unto the Lord and when you're not walking under humility and submission to the word of God. So God is saying to us, this generational wealth is going to be a weighty thing. It's going to be a heavy responsibility. It's not so much to get the money as it is to know what's going to come with it. There's going to be blessing that comes with the wealth, but it's going to add no sorrow to it because the joy of the Lord will be your strength. The joy of the Lord, but just know that it doesn't come without opposition. So what I like about Abraham is Abraham was an obedient man, right? He was a friend of God. God called him a friend, and that's huge. Lot looked around, and he saw the greener pastures, and he thought the grass was green on the other side, which is why he chose Sodom. But we all know what happened to Sodom later. So God is saying, Abraham said, no matter if he go to the left or to the right, he knew he would be blessed. So I talked about this before, geographical locations. That is very important. But just know that sometimes your steps are just ordered. Sometimes God will give you a blueprint and sometimes you will have to know that your steps are just ordered. And it's ordered at the time things happen, not so much as it being far off. Sometimes God gives me information as I'm walking in it. And then sometimes the information is given way far off and I have a strategy and a plan in place. It just depends on how God wants to do it. But he just wanted me to highlight in this hour as we receive and as we walk into uh, obedience and we walk into the things of the Lord and the generational wealth that is coming, we have to know that not only is this wealth from uh, in this day and time, but you have to know the the weightiness of the blessing that you're about to carry because this blessing has been held up for generations. And you see what the definition about that says? Sometimes it comes while you're still alive. Sometimes it comes when people pass away, but then sometimes it comes from the generations that it has been passed down. So God is bringing us the wealth, hidden riches and secret places, and he's bringing this to us. But we have to know the responsibility that it carries once it's given. The Bible says too much is given, much is required. So you don't want to you know, just look at this as, oh my God, I'm going to be blessed. I'm going to have this and that. But you have to know what God is saying. There's a responsibility that actually comes with it. And then he began to give me other scriptures. He gave me scriptures, Genesis 30. Um, and it just talked about um, Jacob being wealthy as well. And it talks about uh, in verse 43, in this way, the man grew exceedingly prosperous and came to own large flocks and female and male servants and camels and donkeys. But prior to that verse, it talked about how Jacob um, dealt with the animals and how he allowed them to mate in a certain way, you know, um, just and then in, in that in his strategy that God gave him on how to mate the animals in order to grow his livestock and all that, he became even more wealthy and more prosperous. So God is saying that he's going to put the wealth in your hand, but it's even going to be multiplied as you be obedient to the strategies and to the direction that he is going to give you. So it's not enough to just get the money in your hand. God is then still going to blow on it. He's going to breathe on it and he's still going to even multiply it even the more. That's why he says some of us will be millionaires, multimillionaires and billionaires, because even in your multimillions and even in your billionaires, He's still going to blow on that. And that's why we can't even comprehend or understand the weight of what we're getting ready to receive. Because it's not so much as what we're getting ready to receive, but the multiplication that is coming even after you receive it. 
And then he gave me first Kings, first Kings chapter 10, verse 23. And this talked about King Solomon was greater in riches and wisdom than all of the Kings of the earth. And we all know King Solomon was a very wealthy and there was none like him. But we also want to know and learn from King Solomon because we know that King Solomon fell from grace and we want to stay close to God and we want to make sure that our heart is postured in a position where God is pleased with our heart and pleased with the way we are stored in your blessing. OK, so then he gave me Galatians three um, verses 28. And this verse talked about um, there is no distinction regard to salvation, neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither slave nor free. There's neither male nor female. For you who believe are all one in Christ Jesus. No one can claim a spiritual superiority. Okay? And if you belong to Christ, if you are in him, then you are Abraham's descendants and spiritual heirs according to the promise. So this generational wealth comes all the way from the blessings of Abraham. And it's still going. It's still in motion. It's still in motion. It's still in motion. It's still in motion. And God wants us to know um, in that scripture, he wants us to know that this is, this is, this is, it's going to be huge because we know how wealthy Abraham was. And we know that the blessing that was on Abraham was on his children. And if the, and if we are heirs according to the promise, because of the blood of Jesus, because of the new covenant, we know that those blessings of Abraham are, are still was trickling our way. So he just wanted you to kind of know the magnitude of the wealth that's being transferred. And then he had me to hone in on Joel 2, 23 to 25. But I was also looking at Joel, um, uh, the verses prior to that. And the verses prior to that, and it talks about prior to a restoration, uh, always comes repentance. So before God restored the land, there's also a call to repentance, okay? So God has been calling us to a place of repentance, to a place of alignment for the kingdom of God. And this season, um, the seasons be, uh, prior to the seasons that we're in now. So prior to getting the blessing, there's always a call to repentance repentance to align with the blessing. You have to align yourself with God in order to receive. Okay. So Joel 2 and 23 through 25, it says, so rejoice, O children of Zion and delight in the Lord, your God, for he has given you early autumn rain and vindication. And he has poured down the rain for you, the early autumn rain and the late spring rain as before. And the threshing floor shall be full of grain and the vats shall overflow with new wine and oil. And I will compensate you for the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the creeping locust, the stripping locust, and the gnawing locust, my great army, which I sent among you. So we know that Joel talks about recompense. We talk about restoration. But God says, where sin abound, grace abounds that much more, meaning there is grace. God is going to give us uncommon favor, uncommon grace in this hour. He's going to rest his empowerment, his ability for us to have strategies and for us to be able to know how to steward the wealth. OK, so it's not just enough to get it, but you have to have wisdom to couple it and to know who to give to, who not to give to, where to go, where to turn, where not to turn. OK. So restoration for the years refer to not only your lifetime, but all that was lost for generations prior in your bloodline, in your blood. This is huge. Do you know people have prayed and have gone on to be with the Lord and have missed it in some cases that just didn't get it? And now God is bringing it back to us. And we get to live to see the goodness of the Lord while we're in the land of the living. Because if we are willing and obedient, we will eat the good of the land. And God is not forgotten about his people. He's not forgotten about his promises. If his promises are yes and amen, yes and amen. Okay. So he wants us to know the restoration for the years, the years that the generations have missed out on. This is huge. This is huge. Okay. And what does it mean to restore? It means to bring back to a previous right practice, custom, or situation. It means to reinstate, okay? Return something to someone, to a former condition or situation. Repair or renovate to its um, original condition. 
And biblically, restoration is always in abundance, better than it was to begin with. Generational wealth has prerequisites, and those prerequisites are repentance, obedience, sacrifice, relationship, and connections. God sent me to 2 Corinthians 9, uh, 7 through 9, and this is where it talks about how he wants you to steward the blessing. <clears throat> how does God want us to steward this blessing? He said in 2 Corinthians 9 and 7, let each one give thoughtfully with purpose. Just as he has decided in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver and delights in one whose heart is in his gift. And God is able to make all grace, every favor and earthly blessing come in abundance to you so that you may always under all circumstances, regardless to the need, have complete sufficiency in everything, being completely self-sufficient in him and have abundance for every good work and act of charity. As it is written and forever remains written, he, the benevolent and generous person scattered abroad, he gave to the poor, his righteousness endure forever. And I just want to, <clears throat> excuse me, I just want to insert this. Me and my son was having a conversation, right? And um, I was talking about how God is getting ready to do a divine reversal. Um, I have another video about the divine reversal, but he's about to do a divine reversal. And the last shall be first and the first shall be last. And we was having a conversation and my son said, you know, <clears throat> it's amazing how much money that the United States um, President Biden has given to um, Ukraine and um, billions upon billions upon billions of dollars, like it's like they're like it's nothing. Right. Um, but then I told my son, I said and then he said, but it's crazy how they say we can solve world hunger problem with just 14 billion dollars. But we done gave way over that three or four times the amount to Ukraine, right? I said, you you answered um, exactly what I was thinking. I said, my point exactly. I said, this is why God is doing a divine, divine reversal and he's snatching the money out of the hands of the wicked and he's giving it to the just. I said, because just what you said, $14 billion will solve world hunger problems. But yet you see there are home, the homeless um, situation in the United States is off the charts. I was uh, actually going to visit Portland, Oregon. And I said, well, let me go on YouTube and let me look at Portland, Oregon, right? I had someone was doing a video, a live video of downtown Portland. There was tents for days. The homeless situation is a complete mess in the United States. And we're only having more and more come into the country, right? But my point in saying all of that is people would rather throw food in the garbage than feed the people that need food or clothe the people or house the people. They would rather throw money at things that don't even matter, or in some cases it does matter, but they would rather give it to a stranger versus giving it to either somebody they know or giving it to a need, a desperate need that is very uh, present in this country, which is homelessness. And you know, the thing about it, um, I'm gonna say this, people will say, well, homeless, you know, they can get a job just like everybody else. You know, God says what you sow, you will reap. If you sow mercy, you will reap mercy. But the flip side to that coin is what I wanna say is, what measure you use, it will be measured back unto you. So how long is your measuring stick for someone else? And my thing is to be homeless and to take food from strangers or to eat out of garbage cans, that go way beyond to me, that go way beyond getting a job. That's a mental condition. That's, a, that's an oppression. That's a whole different type of situation. Somebody that's willing to take a food from a stranger not knowing that if they did anything to it, you know, or just eat out of a trash can, that lets me know that problem is way bigger than just a homeless, somebody just not wanting to work. Now, you do have those issues and you do have those instances, and I'm not saying that that doesn't exist, but you have to understand the mental capacity of a person to be able to, um, to sleep on a, a ground or to sleep in 100 degree weather or minus zero weather, no matter what, that's, that goes way beyond getting a job. So that means the mental capacity is not there. So that means that assistance is needed in some cases. So 
I just wanted to throw that out there because we was talking about that, you know, you could solve world hunger. I said, yeah, you could solve world hunger. And the thing about it is, but the, the money, the, the, the problem is, it's not that it's a shortage of money. That's not what the homeless situation is all about. It's just that the money is in the wrong hands. But I thank God that he is in control. And I thank God that he is putting it into the hands of the just so that we can build, so that we can help, that, so that we can restructure, so that we can uproot, so we can pluck out and overthrow and uh, take over what the enemy meant for bad, that, that, that the God would make it work for the good of them that love him, that is called according to his purpose, that they can see the love of God. God is not saying an only word only. It's not an it's not enough to give a good word. It's not enough to give a good word uh, to tell somebody, oh, let me pray for you and send them on their way. Somebody need to put the finances and some kind of resources need to go with those words. So like we say, we need to put legs with the prayer. We need to put money behind the words. And I thank God that this is happening on a scale like this because this is what it's going to take to restructure and reorganize and to build for the kingdom of God. So I'm super excited, guys, and I'm so excited. Um, and I just want to say he gave me Proverbs 13 and 22, and it says, A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. And I thank God for the generational wealth. And I just want to make sure I, I hone in on everything that he wanted me to give you guys. Um, and I just wanted to say this, too. I had a dream. Um, had a dream, I want to say, probably two to three months ago. I didn't write it down. I normally do, but I didn't write it down. And it was just a quick and a very short dream. But I believe there was a message. And I believe this was from God. Now, God would always meet you where you were. Uh, back in the day, uh, in the 80s, late late 80s, early 90s, I, I worked in the banking for seven and a half years. And I was a, a teller at the bank um, amongst some other, you know, different positions that I had. Um, but I would always find myself to keep dreaming. I would keep dreaming about me going, working at the bank in different seasons of my life, working at the bank. But this particular dream was different from the other dreams I, I normally have uh, working at the bank, like going back to the bank working. This particular dream was, um, was, was, was uh, I want to say, God's glory, if I can just put it in that way. Anytime I've had dreams, dreams before regarding the glory and regarding the word golden, I had a dream one time that a prophet was prophesying to me that you have delivered a golden baby at the Golden Gate Bridge. This particular dream I had, I was at Golden City or Golden State or Street, Golden Street Bank. I would say, thank you for calling Golden Street Bank. How can I help you? And I kept getting it wrong every time I would try to say, thank you for calling. I'm like, oh man. And the people would hang up on the phone because um, I wasn't like saying it right. And I had just come to the bank and I had just started working there again. But then God kept showing me something in the, in the, in the dream. I noticed there was only like five of us there and it was a more elite status. If, if that makes sense. It wasn't like a regular bank. It was more elevated and the, the scene looked more rich. Uh, that's a good word. The scene looked more rich. And then the person who was sitting to my left of me kept saying, that's okay. You'll get it. Try it again. So the phone will ring again. I said, thank you for calling Golden City or Golden um, Street Bank. And then they will hang up. I was like, oh man, I didn't get it. He was like, do it again. So then somebody, someone else will call. Thank you for calling Golden Street or Golden City Bank. Uh, how can I help you or whatever? And then as I kept doing it, I kept, I got more and more comfortable. I got more and more comfortable. I got more and more comfortable. But what the revelation that God gave to me was, I was not only, I was, this time I wasn't working at the bank. I was the bank. That's the revelation I got from this dream. It was different. The scene was different. It was like a black and gold scenery. And I and the revelation that he gave me was the more I got comfortable, the more I, I, I put it like this. When you first get the blessing and the wealth transfer, it's going to feel like you're like, 
oh my God, what do I do? Where do I go? But God says he's going to teach you. He's going to show you how to flow and move in your new blessing that he's given you in your in your abundance so the the longer you're in it and the more you flow in it and the, and the instruction that you're going to be taking from him the more comfortable you you'll begin to get and you'll know how to uh, steward and how to uh, flow and move in the abundance that he has given you and that's what I took away from that dream because the more I talked and the more I caught the more the people called and the person kept saying do it again do it again and then I started feeling more comfortable and I started being more relaxed and but I knew it wasn't just a it was a it was a I was the bank if that makes sense I was the bank in this in this dream so that was that's something for somebody. God God is speaking loud and clear. That's some, that's a word for somebody. And then I also wanted to say ways God will use you in stewarding the blessing. Here's some of the ways that God will use you in stewarding your blessing. He says, this is what he says. Prayer for your family and for others. He's going to use you for intercession, for prayer. Joel 2, 15 and 17 talks about weeping between the porch and the altar, standing in the gap for the living and the dead. So in, God is going to steward you in an intercession and being a prayer warrior for family members and others that he's bringing into your path. So you're going to be called, and I've been doing this a lot in prayer, crying out to God to have mercy on the souls of the people that don't want nothing to do with him, the people that don't know him or the people that do know him and just ain't studying them, you know? And so I've been interceding on behalf of the people, you know, that they will, eyes will be open, ears will be unstopped and hearts will perceive that Jesus is Lord. And I think that the, what God correlates this with the generational wealth is he's saying that there's going to come a time because of the generational wealth. Now you're going to have people's attention. And that's an open door to minister the gospel and bring them into the kingdom. The other thing he said, number two, is you are the bank, which is what I just told you. You will steward the blessing on behalf of your family. So you will steward the blessing on behalf of your family and others God will assign to you. He will show you where to sow. He will show you where to give. So you are going to be the bank, okay? And then number three, it says he will use you as the visionary to build, to uproot, to pluck out, to overthrow, and to take over and take possession of the land, to cross over according to the book, I believe, of Joshua 111. It talks about taking over. Okay, so then number four, it says you will also be the first fruit offering of your family. You will be the first one. I received the prophetic word in 2012 that I would be the first in my family to come into the uh, God's abundance. He said, your family have stuff, okay? Meaning little materialistic things, you know, cars and, and different things. And I can just remember my mom when she passed away. I remember her having all these storage rooms because she owned an apartment building. So they had storage units downstairs, but she took up three or four of the storage un units and it was just electronics, all kinds of stuff that she never used, things that she used to order and all that good stuff, you know, just stuff. And so when the, when the prophetic word came and it's God was saying, your family has stuff, but they don't have my abundance. That let me know that wealth and abundance is more than stuff. It's more than materialistic things. Downloads of wisdom, downloads of love, downloads of humility, downloads of strategies, direction, and downloads of blueprints that things that you're going to build for the kingdom of God. So wealth is an, uh, an abundance of money, but also in the abundance of peace, in the abundance of joy, in the abundance of love and compassion and a passion to do the will of God. That's the abundance. That's the fullness. That's the shalom. That's the nothing missing, nothing broken. Okay. So God is saying that you are the visionary and that you will be the first fruits of your family. He said, your family have stuff, but they don't have my abundance. And you will be one of the first in your family to get the abundance. And I knew that meant wealth and money, but that also meant the wisdom of God. It also meant the, the peace of God, the joy of the Lord. You know, because those things can't be bought. They can't be bought. 
So then he said, number five, God will use you to be a blessing to sow not only money, but to sow prayers, to sow your skills, to sow your time, the word of God into others. So God says he counts you worthy. I know you saying, Lord, why me? But God is saying, why not you? God says, I count you worthy. Okay. So it is not by might. It's not by power but it's by the Holy Spirit. It's nothing that we can do to earn this. It's nothing that we could have said and nothing we could have done, but it's by the power and the spirit and the might of God that this is coming about. So I want you to be encouraged. I want you to know that there is a weighty responsibility that comes with this. It's not just the money, but it comes with heavy responsibility and it comes with obedience to the fullest. We're living in an hour. Things are getting ready to break out. Break out. And I spoke about that in other previous videos about the coming short food shortages the famines and all of the judgments and I had a I did a, um, a word on that can two things be true at the same time I had 11 11 9 1 1 God kept showing me these numbers 1 11 11 11 9 11 <laughs> and now he's showing me guys the number 12 now the number 12 but I've been seeing 11 11 for the last since 2012 I've been seeing that same number. I've been seeing 111 and 1111. And then he recently it was 911. Now it's the number 12. And I know that's governmental order. So I thank God for that. So I just want you to say, don't take it lightly. Too much is given, much is required. Be blessed until the next video. Like, comment, share, subscribe, send it to someone that could be a help and to spread the good news and the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your kind comments. And thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. It's to God be the glory. I pray it be all of him and none of me. Because I want to stay in a posture position where I'm in a hiding place that only you see Christ when you see this channel. So I thank you so much again. And thanks for watching. Until next time, I'll see you in the next video. Bye, loves.